I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and this is the West Block Politics, Perspectives, and Players. Last week, the Chinese ambassador to Canada held a rare press conference where he flatly denied evidence of human rights abuses occurring in Xinjiang province in China. Allegations of genocide and forced labor in Xinjiang are the lies of the century. This is contrary to what human rights groups and journalists have reported is happening. And Prime Minister Justin Trudeau warned about possible consequences from the international community over China's treatment of the Uyghurs, although his cabinet abstained from the vote in which the Canadian Parliament proclaimed it to be a genocide. Joining me now is the Executive Director of the Uyghur Rights Advocacy Project, Mehmet Torti. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us, Mehmet. I, I know that your family has a personal connection to this. Um, can you tell us what your reaction was when you heard the ambassador's comment? when he called uh, the allegations of human rights abuses the lie of the century? Uh, thank you. Uh, the first of all, uh, we have seen a nervousness from the top officials from the Chinese government, including uh, the Chinese ambassador to Canada, and they are trying to defend the indefensible. And when they do that, they are trying to spread another lies. And I understand that uh, they, uh, they failed miserably and they are unsuccessful to defend this, their systematic crime with distortion. The issue is the whole secrecy of crime against humanity and the Uyghur genocide they committed against the Uyghurs and other Turkic people in concentration camps behind the iron walls, watchtowers, and the barbed wires are tumbling one after another. And they orchestrated lies in defending these heinous crimes are being unraveled one by one by their own internal documents, government statistics, and the testimonies of witnesses and the expert uh, revelations. And so Chinese government now starts another campaign by producing fake uh, videos from the Uyghurs in compulsion. And they're trying to send the message that everything is okay for Uyghurs in East Turkestan, or what they call it, Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. But things are not okay. And uh, since October 23rd, 2016, I cannot communicate with my mother and the 37 of, of my other relatives and the tens of thousands of Uyghurs living abroad. They are holding their family photos, their photos of their parents, siblings, close relatives, they are asking the simple questions from the Chinese authorities. Where are my families? And I'm asking that question, where is my mother? Where are my family members? And so far, Chinese government failed to give any answer. Even we cannot have any means of communication with our parents or other relatives. And if everything is okay, why in this modern technology age, modern age of communication, we cannot just make a phone call to our loved ones and a mother. Well, and, and when you were preparing to speak about this publicly, you received a direct message on Twitter about your mother. Tell me what that said. Yeah, it was just three hours, uh, three hours before my appearance uh, to testify before the Human Rights Subcommittee on July 20th, 2020. And I have received a very uh, chilling message, very short and a precise message from one a gentleman or a lady uh, living in somewhere in Sichuan. It is very far from my hometown. And I said, you F mother is dead. And I read this message in two ways. One is probably they killed my mother. And the second way is probably it is the threatening message for me just to stop me to go ahead to testify before the Human Rights Subcommittee. I can't imagine how it must feel to get a message like that when you can't connect with your mother when you can't see how she's doing. Are the Uyghur people being intimidated by the Chinese state here in Canada? Yeah, of course. And uh, we have been talking about the hostage taking since 20 years. Just imagine, I left my hometown in 1991, and since then, Chinese government did not allow a passport, not only my mother, all of my siblings and the clothes are far relatives just to come and see me. Of course, I cannot go back. 
So almost 30, 30 years, it is total isolation. And they are, now they uh, increase that pressure by abducting the family members of the Uyghur activists and uh, forcing them to send a message to their relatives abroad and uh, stop protesting against China. And uh, sometimes public security bureau directly making a phone call to Canadian citizen of Uyghur origin and interfering their daily life, interfering their freedoms. And uh, this issue has been uh, briefed to our officials since almost in my uh, 20 years advocacy work in Canada. It is well known. And as you know, one of uh, our Canadian citizen of Uyghur origin, Hussein Jalal, is my, uh, my friend. He's in Chinese jail since 2006. And the Chinese government uh, did not even disclose where is he now, whether he's alive or dead. And so not only intimidation, harassment, threat, like this, uh, widespread and systematic. What would you like to see Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his government do? And uh, I would like to urge our Prime Minister, and I understand that uh, he's thinking uh, the government of Canada has a responsibility, and that, that responsibility, responsibility should not be one-dimensional. Uh, that responsibility should include uh, the, our uh, founding principles and the, our international obligation. We have to uphold that. If there is a genocide taking place, as Parliament uh, voted yes, and there is no doubt about that, and so our government, instead of abstaining from voting, we should stand up and we should do something about uh, to uh, bring those uh, responsible officials to justice. At the same time, we should do something about to stop this Chinese madness if we do not recognize how we can approach to other countries. And the second message to, my, uh, to our prime minister is, Canadian market is uh, full of uh, Uyghur forced labor tainted products from uh, cotton to tomato to solar panels. And the, for example, just cotton, the one third of global supply of uh, cotton products coming out of the area. And the one third almost, the ketchup or a tomato related products are coming out of the area. Almost 42% of global supply of polysilicon that is being used for a solar panel are coming out of the area. These are the huge numbers. And unfortunately, our market is tainted with the Uyghur forced labor products. And our government issued advisory recently, basically throwing the ball at the, the companies and asking them to exercise due diligence, how they can do that because uh, the companies do not have that capacity to send their investigation team and uh, investigate each step of the supply chain. And the plus Chinese government has a very well-known history of fabricating the documents and the certification. So this is the job for government and the United States for that reason issued a full ban of cotton and the tomato related products and the sanctioned and government entities and the private companies doing business there. And so we, this is our moral obligation, and we don't have any piece of legislation to address that, and uh, our government and our parliament should step up to introduce legislation and uh, stop, clean up our market, because otherwise, as a Canadians, we are indirectly, without knowing, or directly, by knowing now, a contributing Chinese uh, crime of genocide and a crime against humanity, by purchasing those products and uh, sending our pocket money to China. This is unacceptable. Thank you for joining us and our thoughts are with you and with your family. Thank you.